Hello everyone, welcome to today's episode of Candid Kaya. So many of us are future small business owners, yet we're not sure exactly how to manage a business. So today I am here with Jocelyn, founder of Way to Cheer LLC, and she is going to tell us more about how you can successfully manage your business. Stay tuned. Hello, Jocelyn. Hello, how are you? I'm doing fine, thank you. Can we start with just letting the viewers know a little bit about yourself? Yes, so I am the proud daughter of two military parents. I am 30 years old, currently live in Atlanta. I went to school in South Carolina at the University of South Carolina Upstate, where I acquired a Bachelor of Arts degree, followed by two Master's degree after that. And after that, I was a school teacher for seven years. All right, perfect. So now you're the founder of Way to Cheer LLC. Yes. So can you tell us a little bit more about your business? Yes, so Way to Cheer was created by a colleague of mine, Eric Kamansky, who founded Way to Play. Both he and I are both Cobb County educators, Georgia educators. And I was a school teacher. I had always coached high school cheerleading, but when I moved, uh, relocated here from Charlotte, North Carolina, that passion kind of just never went away. But due to kind of my heavy work schedule, I couldn't coach out of high school. So I was like, what can I do with the girls at the elementary school level? So I had an amazing principal who was so supportive, and I created a plan and an outline before I went into her office. And I was like, hey, can I create the school cheerleaders for the elementary school and really just to build leadership and character and the whole child within these students that I was seeing every day in the classroom but also being able to have access to all the girls even ones that weren't my third grade students at the time and that was the beginning of way to cheer but it wasn't way to cheer at that moment um, but that was kind of the start of it all okay all right so tell us a little bit more about what type of steps you had to take in order to make Way to Cheer an LLC? First was kind of just courage. Actually, before Way to Cheer started, I was a school teacher. And at that time, I was in my seventh year, admin assistant, co-director of the after school program. And being a school teacher definitely had its challenges. There was a lot of perks, but a lot of challenges. And I knew I was ready for change in my life. So I wanted to take what I was doing as a school chilling program. And I knew it was ready for me to make that shift, leaving the education profession. So what it just took was literally outlining a business plan, you know, kind of formulating what what is this going to be called? Um, and then how am I going to get it done? And it was doing a lot of research, seeing what was already out there, you know, just kind of that's where the ideation kind of comes into and then the creativity and then just making this new innovation out there and just having that competitive nature in me. Like what can I can do what I love, take all of this education that I've already acquired, that it won't be put to waste and just make it happen. And so it was the name, the business plan, and then it was getting all the resources. What is that marketing going to look like for me? The financial, you know, obligations that I know that I'm going to have to pump in towards it. Being a school teacher, I'm like, where is this money going to come from? And so it was looking at those financial components of where to acquire that money and how to make that happen. And again, it was just that courage, um, that grit, and just, you know, just making it happen, putting it down on paper and putting all those steps in place. And I will say probably the best thing that I ever did was went ahead and just registered Way to Cheer LLC with the state of Georgia because it really just, it made it real. Right. When I just bought my LLC, reserved my name, paid the money, that I think for me was like, okay, this can happen and it's going to happen. And then everything kind of just took off after that. Okay. I have a plug here. If you're interested in learning more about how to start an LLC, please check my page. There's a video on that. All right, moving yeah, forward. So you hinted a little bit about how you were a school teacher mm -hmm. and now you're an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. When do you think is a good time to leave your full-time career to explore more entrepreneurial efforts? I will be perfectly honest. I kind of just knew it within that it was time. I think there was nothing that anyone could say to me that was different. I just knew physically, emotionally, just for my overall well-being, that it was just time for me to leave. 
and I was nervous and I was scared because I was going from a profession. It was a small paycheck, but it was a consistent paycheck. Then I had benefits and insurance, right? Mm -hmm. So then I'm like, man, I'm about to leave. I'm going to be losing all of my health care insurance. I'm going to lose at least what I know is a consistent paycheck at the end of the month to just go on a whim. Like, I knew my product was great, but you got to make other people know it's great, too. And right. I had to, like, prove myself. Um, and so it's just I just knew it. But it literally just took the faith and the courage and just going on, just putting it out there. But I will say it's also who you surround yourself with and who mm -hmm. you expose this information to of you wanting to make that transition. Right. So I had a really good friend of mine who's actually a life coach who helped me during this time period to make that transition. Because one thing I will say as an entrepreneur, you can't share everything with everyone. Um, and, and, and I'll just put it like that. You got to have, you got to surround yourselves with people who are sharks, who are just as hungry and who are going to support that. But then also kind of just give you, this is what it's going to be like. And it's not going to be easy and it's going to be hard. I work harder now as an entrepreneur than I did as a school teacher working like two additional jobs. You know, you're going to lose some sleep. It, it gets hard, um, but you kind of just have to, you have to get through that. Right. And you have to be able to learn from your failures. Okay. All right. So how important is it to get legal advice or legal assistance when starting a business? I would say it's so important. Um, actually, before I even founded LL, um, my way to share LLC, I actually spoke with a really good friend of mine who's a lawyer here in Atlanta. And he definitely kind of worked with me through even non-disclosure agreements. For me, when I start wanting to expand and bring on employees, um, non-competitive agreements, even um, understanding contracts that I'm signing with any venue that I'm planning to push my business into, um, again, doing everything the right way, registering your business with the state that you live in, or, you know, here in Georgia, um, learning how to use different resources like QuickBooks mm -hmm. um, for tax purposes, understanding how to control your operating expenses, document those um, operating expenses, payroll for yourself, how you're doing that. Those are so many things that you can get good and bad advice from that, but in the end, this is your baby, and right. you want it to kind of soar, and you never want anything to kind of happen on the back end. So I always say do correctly, just register, make sure you're putting 20% aside um, for tax purposes um, when you file your taxes at the end of the year. Um, but if you have any questions, I mean, there's so many resources available, but I definitely inquired with an attorney who did a lot of work with small businesses. Mm -hmm. But then I also just talked to people who are owners of small businesses right. and just kind of hearing their perspective and kind of how they maneuver because starting a business does cost a lot of money. And right. we're like, how do I do this um, correctly? Because you're going to have to put money towards that legal advice, right. but at least it gets done correctly at the beginning. And right. you're not trying to clean it up when you're like five years in. Going back to the money piece, can you tell us a little bit more about how much money is required to start a business and how do you make a profit? That's a great question. And when I was first doing research on it, a lot of sources say you need about $10,000. But for me, I was able to do it between 3000 I probably capped myself at five, And that was just through personal savings and then family and friends. I didn't use bank loads or anything like that. Um, and that was just for supplies and marketing right. out the gate is what <laughs> that money was used for. And then immediately rental of spaces. Um, but how I make a profit is everything is done on my online domain. I honestly love Stripe. Uh, PayPal was one of my e-commerce transactions that I was using, but I love Stripe just because it gives automatic invoices to my clients. Everything goes on a spreadsheet, and then you can link it to MailChimp and all that stuff. Um, but when I first started out, it's, you know what, you give a little to get a little. So <laughs> there was a lot of scholarships that I did, providing my service because I had to prove that I had a great service. This is what it is. This is what I offered. And so there was a lot of um, families that I have worked with when I was a school teacher that I would offer scholarships to. But guess what? Those scholarships turned into referrals and mm -hmm. word of mouth is probably one of your biggest things as an entrepreneur. And then that's how the more that profit really started working in. It's just, you, you gotta be okay to give a little, give credit, you know, if that will, 
you know, it's not a free product because you're going to gain so much and you right. can't be afraid to give something out. Right. Um, and that was probably the biggest thing. And from that, I was able to really gain. So I went from in one year's time making one year's profit from one school to two schools or to three schools and now I'm going into my fourth school. Wow. But it meant giving a lot um, on the front end is how that profit and one thing I will say about profit is you, you get what you put, in, you get out of it what you put into it, meaning like I didn't cut corners with the website that I use as my platform for my business. Right. I did not cut corner in my business cards. I made them color. I made them double sided. Um, my t-shirt quality was not cut in. So to get that profit that you want to see, you have to pump into your business because you're going to get a return on it. So just don't be afraid to put it in on the front end. All right, so next question, how do you successfully manage your cash flow? That is a great question. Obviously, when I transitioned to be an entrepreneur, the cash flow was completely different from a teacher because it was coming in consistently and not just one time per month. So what I did is I made sure I set up first my PayPal business account, um, and then you can also start a small business bank account with an outside bank. For me personally, I didn't do that. I just did my PayPal business account, which I love because they actually give you a PayPal business debit card. Mm -hmm. um, and so as money was coming in, I just start separating. Okay. So I kind of just categorize the funds that are coming in. What's going to be going towards new supplies and apparel? What is going to be going towards um, commission or employee payment? Mm -hmm. um, what is coming in to me? What is coming in to rental? So definitely separate your business income for, from your business expenses and your personal expenses because they can kind of all get mashed together. Right. But again, for tax purposes, you want to be able to show that your money is going into a different area than into just your personal checking account. Right. And there's tons of companies and businesses that will do that for you. So keep it separate is probably the biggest advice. Okay. Okay. Good points. All right, Jocelyn. So what are some do's and don'ts of becoming an entrepreneur? Um, for do's, I would definitely say having a strong work ethic. Um, okay. Have an optimistic deposition about you. Um, and just definitely into having networking skills and just being a self-starter and being motivated um, okay. because you're going to get tired because it, and that's, I think it's a hard thing for people right? just because you're like, man, like I'm doing what I love, but I'm still tired. Mm -hmm. um, so, but that's, those are the do's. When I say don't, it's really, it's a lack of not knowing what you're doing in the management right. piece or the people that you're bringing on, not keeping adequate records um, of operating expenses, even going into it, not having enough startup cost. Um, those are probably some of the biggest don'ts, I would say, is okay. just um, just not having a, a good outline, business outline and plan. So basically, you say, do be prepared, be prepared. don't be unprepared. Don't be, that's All exactly right. right. Yeah. <laughs> Like, we got it then. All right. So Jocelyn, what are your three best tips to starting a business? My three best tips in starting a business is one, just kind of having the ideation about it, having the idea of the product or the service. Um, it's something that's completely new that's not on the market or something that's already out there that you know that can be perfected. Um, number two is having the creativity behind it. You know, it's just how do you separate yourself from everything else? Because again, entrepreneurship, you're not the large majority in the field. You're just a small business, you know, in a pool of everything else. So having that creativity of how you're going to brand it and what makes it different. Um, and then just the innovation behind it and how you're going to execute it and, and the marketing component of it and just really kind of formulating it to make it all come to life. All right, last question, just is, what is your best piece of advice for aspiring business owners everywhere? Um, just to have that tenacity and grit and just simply go after it. I mean, you honestly kind of don't have anything to lose. It's right. out there. There's so many great ideas and plans out there, and it's okay. Like, just go after it. Just work hard. Outline it. Make it make sense. And I would honestly just say, if you have a business name and you love it and that's what you feel 
is what it's going to be, go ahead and just register <laughs> your LLC. Mm -hmm. Because once you have that paper, and they automatically send it to you in like five minutes. Once you have that paper, it just makes it that much more real. And I right. think it's going to give you that fuel to go ahead and start everything else. That website. You don't have to open up your domain for everyone. But start the website. Start going on Vistaprint or whoever you use for business cards. Start going ahead and putting those so when you're ready to launch, you have everything already there. And I think it just brings a little bit, it's easier to bring people on mm -hmm. to also grow your business. Okay. All yeah. right. Well, thank you, Jocelyn, for coming on today's yeah. episode. That concludes today's interview. We hope that you all learned some really great tips from Jocelyn about her business and how you can start a business. All right. Well, if you guys have any questions or comments, just leave them below and we'll make sure that they get answered. All right. Cheers to starting your own business. We'll see you next time.